Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out another tutorial from ADSRSounds.com. So in today's video, we are going to be checking out some tips and tricks for Serum. More specifically, we're going to be looking at how you can make Serum velocity sensitive. So I actually had a couple questions coming through uh, the network on how to do this, because it's not as straightforward as with some synth. It's kind of like Massive, where you have to... I don't know, uh, gently massage serum into becoming more velocity sensitive. It's, it's just not something that you can turn up or down for the whole synth, which some people might see it as a bad thing, but it's also a cool thing because you have a lot of control then over what is velocity sensitive because of the freedom with the modulation options inside of serum. So I guess the, the first thing I want to mention is you... If you want to make a sound velocity sensitive, you got to start to ask yourself, why do you want to make it velocity sensitive? And second thing you should ask yourself is, if you do want to make it velocity sensitive, what are the most important elements that are creating that sound inside of Serum? Is it the wavetable? Is it the filter? Is it the combination of the two? Or is it the effects? Because that's what you're going to want to be reactive with the velocity. So I have a pluck sound pulled up, and it is not currently velocity sensitive. <laughs> I'm playing this live so you can hear me hitting on the keys. So if I mess up, I apologize. But yeah, so that's just all light key presses and I'll turn the sound down and you should be able to hear this if I bang on the key. So light key press, hard key press. Uh, there's no change in sound, right? So sometimes that's a great thing for sounds like basses and some types of leads and it even works for pads. But if maybe you're in a part of a song where you want it to build and you want more emotion or just more expressiveness, maybe it blends with the vocals nicer, whatever the case may be, there is a time and place where you would want some expressive playability on your synth. It also makes a sound and feel more like an instrument as opposed to just something in the computer. So this velocity curve down here is what you're going to be working with. So you have the option of keeping it where it is, and then pretty much as you work up the keyboard, it becomes more velocity sensitive on the higher notes as opposed to the bass notes. And you can control this. You can you know have them all basically ping out at a huge velocity. So right now, no matter how hard I hit the key, it's just going to open up the cutoff filter all the way. As opposed to turning this down, I have to really hit the key hard to get it to open up, as opposed to in the middle, it's gonna be similar. And you can see on the grid where the note is on the keyboard. So watch, right right here, if I start to, or where the velocity is, I'm sorry, on, the, on this little grid. So if I turn this down, at that velocity that just opened up the filter, it's not now opening up the filter. So that's how you can control it. All right, so I like to work with it kind of down here for plucks. For certain sounds, for a pad, I might even have it a little bit lower. But what this will allow you to do is you just need to modulate certain destinations inside of Serum. So with a pluck, the cutoff might be really cool. Now, you don't want to modulate all the way out because it's going to change the whole sound. Right, that basically turns it into lead. I just want to modulate a little bit just to get some, just to get some change and some, you know, interesting, some, something interesting happening, right? So I'm going to apply this to the wavetail position of my oscillator B. The reason I'm doing that as opposed to oscillator A, oscillator A is just a single cycle uh, saw waveform. This actually has some information in the wavetable. So watch this as I start to hit my keys. It moves around as I'm playing it. And again, these are fine edits. You typically don't want to just crank everything up because it will change the sound. I might add a little bit more of the noise, the white noise, as it happens. Um, you could go to your effects and have more effects come through as you play a little bit louder, but I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. I am going to modulate the, we'll do the decay. We'll add a little bit more time for the decay. So now these are subtle edits, but it'll make it more fun to play. So let's listen to that. Right, so you should be able to tell that difference. So you can also go to the Matrix tab and set up a modulation destination that you can't set up drag and drop. And I do like kind of rounding out this process with this technique. So you can see the four velocity macros that we've assigned. Well, you can choose velocity here. Uh, we'll do it for this fifth one right here. And we'll choose velocity. And now what we're going to do 
is we're going to turn this up maybe to about 15 to 20. And we're going to go to global and choose amp. So now this will actually turn up all of Serum when we start to play it a little bit louder. And the, it's going to turn it up dependent on how our velocity curve is set. So I usually like doing that last after I have everything kind of set up with the filter. So I might turn everything down a little bit just so it's not as noticeable, but it's to me and to my ear, this specific pluck sound is a little bit more fun to play. I can actually get it to react to what I'm tactile, what I'm feeling, you know, with, with the tactile touch of my keyboard, as opposed to it just being something that feels very in the box to me. So if you guys have been wondering how to do that inside of Serum, there you go. That's how it, it can be done. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.